The Flat Earth, Bible Truth in an Unstable World. The Earth is not a globe. Our Earth is flat. Prayerful study of any worthwhile matter and being faithful to the evidence found is the manner Father would we investigate everything. With much study behind us at WLC, we have found the globe model of the earth is wholly false. He that answereth a matter before he heareth it, it is folly and shame unto him. Proverbs 18, 13. A lifetime of deceptive information was hard to shake, but with special precision, receiving the knowledge of truth is far healthier than holding emotive error learned when but a child. We pray you too will investigate the Creator's ways with an open mind and an honest heart. Truth is never afraid of the fullest investigation. David Wardlaw Scott This is no exhaustive study of the flat earth, but should encourage honest investigation into this intriguing subject. For more, please visit worldslastchance.com According to scripture, the earth is immovable. Fear before him all the earth. The world also shall be stable, that it be not moved. 1 Chronicles 16.30 Yahuwah reigneth. He is clothed with majesty. Yahuwah is clothed with strength, wherewith he hath girded himself. The world also is established that it cannot be moved. Psalm 93.1 Say among the heathen that Yahuwah reigneth. The world also shall be established that it shall not be moved. Psalm 96.10a.b Bless Yahuwah, O my soul. O Yahuwah, my Elohim, thou art very great. Thou art clothed with honor and majesty who laid the foundations of the earth, that it should not be removed forever. Psalm 104, verses 1 and 5. The earth and the heavenly bodies are enclosed by the firmament. And Elohim said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And Elohim made the firmament, and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And Elohim called the firmament heaven. And the evening and the morning were the second day. Genesis 1, 6-8 It could not be any clearer. There is water both below the firmament and above the firmament. Praise him, ye heaven of heavens, and ye waters that be above the heavens. Psalm 148, verse 4. The word translated as firmament here is Strong's H7549, Rakia, which signifies the vault of heaven supporting waters above. The heavenly bodies were placed inside this firmament. And Elohim said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And Elohim set them in the firmament of the heaven. Genesis 1, 14-17 Scripture states in plain language that 1. There is water both below and above the firmament. Genesis 1, 6-8 2. 
the heavenly bodies were placed inside the firmament. Genesis 1, 14 to 18. The firmament is inherently solid. The root word of rakia or firmament is Strong's H7554, raka, which means by analogy to expand, by hammering, by implication to overlay with thin sheets of metal. Beat, make broad, spread abroad, stamp, stretch. We conclude as the firmament holds back waters, it is solid, as if hammered out like sheet metal. Elihu, in his conversation with Job, confirms this using this very word, rakka, to express how Yahuwah spread out the sky. Hast thou with him spread out, H. 7554, rakka, the sky, which is strong and as a molten looking glass? Job 37.18 this is a key passage quoting those who advocate the globe model. It is he that sitteth upon the circle of the earth, and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers, that stretcheth out the heavens as a curtain, and spreadeth them out as a tent to dwell in. Isaiah 40, 22. The word circle is Strong's H2329, chug. It means circle, circuit, or compass. Under divine inspiration, Isaiah was deliberate in his word choice, not lacking a Hebrew word to describe ball as in the following. He will surely violently turn and toss thee like a ball into a large country. Isaiah 22:18. Isaiah chose to use Strong's H1754, Dur, not 2329, Chug, altogether different terms. Yahuwah sits upon the vault of the heavens above the earth, and the inhabitants of earth appear as grasshoppers from this vantage point. How great he is! Father Yahuwah sits on or above the firmament. He has stretched over the earth like a tent, often found in such terms throughout the scriptures, and agrees completely with a conceptualized flat earth. Eliphaz, too, confirms the solid nature of the firmament when, while speaking to Job, he says, Yahuwah walks upon the Chug, Strong's, H2329, used by Isaiah to note the vault of heaven. Thick clouds are a covering to him that he seeth not, and he walketh in the circuit, H2329, of heaven, H8064, Shamaim, Job 22:14. Is not El in the height of heaven? H8064, Shamaim, and behold the height of the stars, how high they are. Job 22:12. According to Scripture, the earth is flat. We find insightful moments in Job chapter 38 as Yahuwah appears to him with many questions. One is especially telling. Hast thou perceived the breadth of the earth? Declare if thou knowest it all. Job 38, 18. The word breath here is Strong's H7338, Rahab, which means breath, broad or wide expanse. Yahuwah asks Job how wide the earth was. This seems a legitimate question on a flat earth, but makes little sense of a globe. The details of Nebuchadnezzar's prophetic dream in Daniel 4 also indicate 
a flat earth. These were the visions of my head while on my bed. I was looking and behold a tree in the midst of the earth and its height was great. The tree grew and became strong. Its height reached to the heavens and it could be seen to the ends of all the earth. Daniel 4, 10 and 11, the New Living Version. While this was just a dream, only on a flat earth would this be possible. Now, let us look at the return of our loving Savior. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. And the stars of heaven fell onto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together. And every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens, and in the rocks of the mountains, and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? Revelation 6 12 to 17. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so. Amen. Revelation 1 7. According to John the Revelator, 1. John agrees with other prophets. Stars were not larger than the earth and millions of miles away, as one star could destroy many earths. Note as well, John tells us the stars fell to the earth, not hurled to the earth. 2. The heavens will then depart like a scroll, Revelation 6.14. This is consistent with the firmament being stretched out like a curtain or tent and making no sense if the earth were a sphere. 3. Everyone on earth will see Yahushua coming in glory. Revelation 1.7 This makes perfect sense on a flat earth, but not upon a spherical earth. 4. The wicked and unrepentant will seek to hide themselves from the wrath of the Lamb and the face of him that sitteth on the throne. Revelation 6, 15 and 16. When the heavens are rolled back like a scroll, the wicked will behold the face of him who sits upon the throne above the vault of heaven and will seek to hide themselves. Scripture states, that at the second coming of Yahushua, the heavens will depart as a scroll when it is rolled together, and that every eye shall see him. See Revelation 1, 7, Revelation 6, 12 to 17. This cannot be reasonably understood given the global model of the earth. When the sky is rolled back, the wicked will behold Yahuwah upon his throne and will seek to hide from his awesome presence. It is the heavenly bodies that move, not the earth. Then spake Joshua in the sight of Israel, Sun, stand thou still upon Gibeon, and thou moon in the valley of Ahalan. So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and hasted not to go down about a whole day. Joshua 10, 12 and 13. Joshua commands the sun and moon to stand still and the sun stood still in the midst of heaven. The earth is not told to stop spinning. Thus we must admit this passage clarity. 
science vindicates a stationary earth. In Isaiah, Yahuwah caused the sun to return in the sky, causing the shadow of the sundial to move backwards. Behold, I will bring again the shadow of the degrees, which is gone down in the sundial of Ahaz, ten degrees backward. So the sun returned ten degrees, by which degrees it was gone down. Isaiah 38, 8. Isaiah believed the sun moved, not the earth. King David also believed the sun moved. The heavens declare the glory of El, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, and rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. His going forth is from the end of the heaven, and his circuit unto the ends of it, and there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. Psalm 19, 1 to 6. Yahuwah forbid we make the testimony of the prophets subservient to the theories of erring and deceitful men. It is not Scripture alone which testifies to the flat earth reality. The empirical evidence is absolutely overwhelming. Evidence abounds for the honest seeker of truth. Objections on the surface seem valid, but fail miserably under close examination. World's Last Chance invites you to thoroughly study with honest heart and determined commitment to bow to the evidence wherever it leads. When pride cometh, then cometh shame, but with the lowly is wisdom. Proverbs 11, 2.